Whether you call it Martingale, Fibonacci, or D'Alembert, every gambler has dreamed of beating the casino with a clever system. It sounds logical, even mathematical, but there's a hidden truth. Every single one of these strategies, no matter how complex, loses in the long run. Today, we'll break down the four most famous betting systems, the mathematics that secretly destroys them, and why even the smartest gamblers fall for the illusion of control. Let's start with the oldest and most seductive idea in gambling, the martingale. The rule is simple. You double your bet after every loss. That way, when you finally win, you recover all previous losses plus one single unit of profit. It sounds bulletproof. You can't lose forever, right? Let's test that logic. Suppose David bets $1 on red and roulette. If he loses, he doubles to $2. Lose again, $4, then $8, then $16. He keeps doubling until he wins. When he finally wins, he earns $1 profit no matter how many losses came before. So far, so good. Until math hits back. Let's see what happens after a streak of losses. First loss, $1. Second loss, $2. Third loss, $4. Fourth loss, $8. Fifth loss, $16. Sixth loss, $32. Seventh loss, $64. Eighth loss, $128. Ninth loss, $256. Tenth loss, $512. In just 10 consecutive losses, David must bet $512 after already losing a total of 511. All that risk for a $1 reward. But the chance of losing 10 times in a row is tiny. True, about half of 1%. That's because 0.486 raised to the power of 10 is roughly 0.005. That means he wins 99.5% of his sequences. So it feels like free money. David wins $1 almost every time. But in that half of 1% of cases, he loses everything his entire $512 bankroll. If we imagine 100 gamblers using this strategy, 99 of them win $1 and one loses 512. Across all gamblers, that's $99 won minus 512 lost, a total loss of $413. The average loss per sequence works out to around $4.13, which is exactly what Roulette's house edge predicts. And notice something else. Once that catastrophic loss happens, the gambler is bankrupt. He doesn't get to start again a hundred times. So even though ruin seems rare, it's mathematically certain over time. That's the cruel secret of Martingale. It offers many small wins and one enormous loss, a perfect psychological trap. Now meet Emma. She's the opposite of David. She believes doubling after losses is madness. Her idea? Double after wins. She starts small and lets the casino's money work for her. If she wins $1, she bets two. Win again, four, then eight, lose at any point, back to one. It sounds brilliant. Instead of chasing losses, she's riding the hot hand. And when luck turns, she loses only the initial one dollar. On paper, that feels unbeatable. Small risk, massive upside. Let's walk through what actually happens. Lose the first spin, lose one dollar. Win once, then lose. Win one dollar, then lose two. Net result, minus one dollar. Win twice, then lose. Win three, lose four. Again, minus one dollar. Win three times in a row. Profit of seven dollars. In roulette, the chance of winning three in a row is roughly 0 0.486 multiplied by itself three times, about 11.5%. So 88.5% of the time, Emma ends with a small loss, and 11.5% of the time, she wins seven dollars. If you multiply outcomes by their probabilities, 11.5% times seven minus 88.5% times 1 gives a result of negative 8 cents per sequence. Still negative. So where's the illusion? It lies in how the wins feel. When that streak of 3 wins hits, the system looks like magic. The wins come in clusters, the profit feels exponential, and it convinces the mind that there's a rhythm to randomness. That's the hot streak illusion. Your brain mistakes short-term clustering for a pattern, but in probability, every spin is independent. The roulette wheel doesn't remember your last win. So the reverse martingale doesn't fix the odds. It just rearranges them into more exciting emotional spikes. It's the gambler's equivalent of chasing a lucky mood instead of a logical plan. Now comes Frank. He's not reckless like David or impulsive like Emma. He wants order. He trusts numbers, sequences, and structure. So he borrows from one of the most beautiful patterns in mathematics, the Fibonacci sequence. It goes 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on. Each number is the sum of the previous two. 
It's found in seashells, flowers, galaxies, and now in Frank's betting notebook. Here's his method. He starts by betting the first number in the sequence, $1. If he loses, he moves to the next number, another $1. Lose again, $2. Lose again, $3. After every win, he moves two steps back in the sequence. The goal, slowly recover previous losses without taking big jumps. It looks disciplined and elegant, and for a while, it works. He wins a few, loses a few, his balance fluctuates gently. But here's what's happening beneath the calm surface. Every time Frank loses multiple bets in a row, the numbers climb. 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and soon, he's risking 21 units just to recover the smaller ones. Let's say he starts at $1 per unit and hits a bad streak of 8 losses. His next bet would be $21. If he loses that too, the sequence keeps expanding. What looked like a steady staircase turns into a cliff. And when he finally wins, he doesn't even gain much. He just crosses out two steps and continues. So while Martingale explodes quickly, the Fibonacci system drains you slowly. A controlled, graceful descent. Suppose he plays 100 spins with an average bet of around $3. At roulette's 5.26% edge, he'll lose about $15.78 on average. Exactly what he'd lose by flat betting $3 each time. The difference? Fibonacci feels intelligent. It disguises loss behind mathematical beauty. It's the illusion of logic. Slow, calculated, and completely powerless against probability. Grace believes she's found the perfect system. It's not about luck or streaks. It's about organization. She doesn't gamble, she manages. Her method, called La Boucher, or the cancellation system, is a favorite among players who love structure. First, she writes down her target profit as a sequence of numbers. Let's say she wants to win $15. She writes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Each number represents a dollar. Her first bet is the sum of the first and last numbers. 1 plus 5, $6. If she wins, she crosses both out. If she loses, she adds the amount lost. 6 to the end of the sequence. So the list evolves like this. Step 1. Bets $6. Loses. Sequence becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Step 2. Bets $7. Wins. Removes 1 and 6. Now 2, 3, 4, 5. Step 3. Bets $7. Wins. Removes 2 and 5. Now 3, 4. Step 4. Bets $7. Wins. Sequence cleared. Profit $15. It feels like running a clean ledger. Every win cancels two numbers, like checking debts off a list. But when luck turns, the list grows fast. Suppose her first three bets lose instead. Now her list reads 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The next bet, 1 plus 9 equals $10. Lose again, and the next becomes 11. Before long, she's risking $40 to $50 per spin just to maintain her system. It's bookkeeping masquerading as control. The illusion of progress keeps her confident while the risk quietly compounds. Just like the martingale, one long streak of losses wipes away all her careful record keeping. In the end, La Boucher doesn't beat the odds. It just tracks the path to ruin with beautiful handwriting. It's the accountant's dream and the mathematician's nightmare. Perfectly balanced on paper and perfectly doomed in practice. Now let's step away from systems and talk about math that never changes. In American Roulette, the probability of winning an even money bet, like red or black, is 18 out of 38. So the expected value of a $1 bet is 18 divided by 38 times plus 1 plus 20 divided by 38 times negative 1. That equals negative 0.0526. In simple words, every dollar wagered loses about 5.26 cents on average. That's not per hour or per spin. That's per dollar bet. So no matter how you structure your bets, double it, have it, reverse it, write it on a chart, you can't change that average loss. If your total wagered amount over time is $1,200, your expected loss is 1,200 multiplied by 0.0526, about $63.12. And here's the key insight. Every system ends up wagering about the same total volume over long play. So they all end in the same negative expectation. What changes isn't profit, it's variance. Martingale produces tiny steady wins and rare disasters. Reverse Martingale gives many small losses and rare jackpots. Fibonacci and Labouchere give the illusion of structure, but identical math underneath. Different routes, same destination. Here's a strange but true statement. If your goal is to minimize expected loss, you should make one large bet and walk away. Because the house edge applies per dollar wagered. 
Fewer total wagers means fewer times that 5.26% tax applies. Example, if you have $100 and bet it all once on red, your expected loss is $5.26. If you split it into $101 bets, your expected loss is also $5.26, but with near certain volatility dragging you toward ruin. And if you use Martingale, you'll likely wager far more than $100 total before losing it, increasing your total expected loss beyond $5.26. So yes, one big bet is mathematically optimal for loss minimization, but it's also emotionally unbearable because it gives you only one shot. Gamblers prefer the illusion of control that comes with multiple smaller bets, even though it guarantees a slower, certain loss. In pure probability theory, Gambler's Ruin describes what happens when a player with finite capital faces an opponent, the casino, with infinite capital. Even if the game were perfectly fair, with 50-50 odds, the player's ruin is guaranteed eventually. The formula can be expressed as the probability of ruin equals 1 minus, open parenthesis, 1 minus, open parenthesis, Q, divided by P, close parenthesis, raised to the power of initial capital divided by goal, close parenthesis where P is the probability of winning, and Q is 1 minus P. In games like roulette where the probability of winning is less than losing, ruin isn't just probable, it's inevitable. Every progression system merely stretches the timeline before that inevitability strikes. So why do intelligent people still believe in these systems? Because they deliver short-term rewards that feel consistent. Winning 9 out of 10 sessions feels like success, even if the 10th wipes out everything. It's the same psychology behind slot machines and trading addiction. Small wins release dopamine, while the rare total loss feels like bad luck rather than mathematical certainty. Each system exploits a different human bias. Martingale exploits loss aversion. Reverse Martingale feeds the hot hand fallacy. Fibonacci appeals to our pattern-seeking bias. Labouchere plays on the illusion of progress. Gamblers remember the wins and rationalize the losses. That's why these systems survive centuries after being disproven. All gambling systems can be reduced to this single equation. Expected loss equals total amount wagered multiplied by the house edge. You can disguise it with doubling, reversing, or crossing numbers off lists. But the casino edge doesn't care. The only true variable is how fast you lose, not whether you lose. David's Martingale gives slow, inevitable collapse. Emma's reverse Martingale gives short, thrilling swings. Frank's Fibonacci gives smooth decline. Grace's Labouchere gives elegant accounting of ruin. Different stories, identical math. The most dangerous part of every betting system isn't the mathematics. It's the psychology. They give you structure, hope, and momentum. The illusion that discipline can conquer probability. But in reality, the casino doesn't care how you play. It just wants one thing, action. Every spin, every bet, every progression feeds the same 5.26% edge. The longer you play, the closer you get to the inevitable outcome. The house wins. And that's why every so-called foolproof betting system isn't a strategy. It's just a slower, more elaborate path to the same destination.